Great. Mm-hmm. I think we're good to go. Mary, can you uh, hear me okay? Yep. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, Gunnar, unfortunately, is unable to join today, so uh, I'll be uh, emceeing. Um, before we dive in, I just want to remind folks that the Etherpad agenda for today's call is at etherpad.mozilla.org slash December 11th, which is capital D-E-C-1-1. And before we push ahead uh, the first item on our agenda, I just want to pause and see whether there's anybody who's joining this call for the first time who wants to say hello. You can hit star 7 to unmute or just add yourself in the Etherpad under line 68 to say hi. Sounds like uh, nobody wants to say hello, so why don't we push ahead, uh, direct people to line 104, uh, introducing the Mozilla IBEAN Open Art Fellows. We've got a bunch of great Open Art guests here to, to chat with us. And some of them will be sharing some of the, the work they're doing as demos. So if you want to follow along with screen sharing, you can just click on the link in line 109 and just enter any name when, when prompted. So why don't we turn it over to uh, Angela, do you want to start things off and introduce folks? Sure. Um, I'm just getting my desktop sharing up and running as well. So, um, well, I'm also speaking on behalf of Ben, who is I don't think here in the call yet. Um, so very quickly, we just wanted to introduce all of the fabulous Open Art Fellows. Um, last week we announced the three recipients and um, yeah, we would like everybody to introduce themselves shortly uh, today. Open Arts is a collaboration between um, iBeam in New York and Mozilla. And we also have Paul here. I'm not sure if Roddy is also here. Um, but Paul from uh, iBeam, who's also the project manager of the Open Art Project, is going to give a very, very quick um, intro to the fellowship. And then we'll kick it off with those to briefly talk about what they're going to be working on for the next six months. So Paul, if you're there, uh, you have to press star 7 to unmute. Hi, hi there. Um, Roddy could not join us today, but um, I'm going to represent iBeam. Um, so as Angela said, I'm project managing this project. Um, to tell you a little bit about the collaboration and iBeam, if you don't know iBeam already, it's an art and technology center in New York that's been around for about 15 years supporting artists and creative technologists through a residency and fellowship program, um, and then also a range of public programs and education. Um, so this conversation with Mozilla about collaborating started about two years ago and trying to think about a way to um, bring the two organizations together in a way that made sense. The connection is really in, in the interest in open culture and open source. Um, so, you know, an idea was hatched around trying to support artists through uh, an open call for projects um, with a bit of a focused brief that sort of distinguished itself from other projects that both Mozilla and iBeam have been doing in the past. Um, so, uh, kicked off with a call for proposals um, earlier this fall um, asking for you know, looking for projects that enabled creative collaboration or social mobilization. So it was fairly open um, in terms of what that, that might mean. And we got a, a really nice selection of um, proposals, um, which we then pared down to a group of finalists. There was 11 finalists that we were looking at. And then from that list, we had to choose three projects to move forward with in supporting. Um, and the three projects that we ended up going with and the three fellows are um, Toby Shockman, Forest Oliphant and Nort Labs, who I believe are all on the call with us today. So we wanted to take a little bit of time today to just let them um, introduce their project and, and what their plans are for the six-month production period, which is set to begin um, at the beginning of January and then finish up in July. Yeah. Um, and we'll also be bringing back the three fellows in the new year to talk about their projects more in depth. So today's really just an intro so that everybody knows uh, who's who and what everybody is uh, working on. And then um, <laughs> ignore my email <laughs> popping up in the screen sharing. Um, so I'm going to ask maybe um, Addie and Stefan to start us off, if that's okay for you guys. And again, you'll have to hit star 7 to unmute yourselves. 
Okay, can you hear us? Yes. Yep. And let me know when you want me to show and what you want me to show. Okay. So uh, I'm Abby and uh, I'm Stefan. Hello. Uh, and we're the Nord Labs group. Uh, so our project was Bonfu. It's basically the idea is to create a collaborative bill of materials web repository for open source hardware hardware projects. Uh, and the main motivation for doing it is to um, to really tackle the complexities that come with uh, managing the bill of materials for open hardware projects. Um, so the idea with Bonfu is basically to create a community controlled uh, project repo which helps people kind of build locally but also uh, build projects globally in a really effective way but also socially. So our example project is the SOAR which basically gave us the motivation to do this and uh, it's a project with about um, like 300 unique parts and managing them is very complicated, uh, especially if you want to take in like suggestions from the from the community mm -hmm. and and evolve uh, the bill of materials as the project evolves. So Angela, if you could pull up uh, one of the links we sent you of the laser store uh, bomb just so you guys can have a reference for sort of what we've been working with if you're not familiar with our project. I've got the bomb subsystems USD link up now. Okay. So this, this is a very simple example of how um, it looks like. It, um, our current version is this um, internally developed um, script we use. It's very simple uh, and it only tackles one of, of the problems you have um, um, to show a bill of materials for both the building process and the ordering process. So when you engage in the open hardware project, you first need to order all the parts obviously uh, which is sort of the first hurdle uh, uh, you run into when you engage in a project that's open hardware. Uh, and the second one is then you need to put all the parts together. So you need two views uh, for, for the building. So then if you, if you can click on the next uh, link we sent you which is by subsystem. The first you just saw was supplier and the second one is subsystem. So basically each subsystem like the gantry uh, the actual frame, inner parts, outer parts, the bed are all organized by subsystems. So you can order parts specific to that specific piece, not by supplier. So um, with Bomfu, we really want to add all the features that are not in there yet, which is uh, one of the, the main um, difficulties is how do you get suggestions from the community? Um, and sort of create alternative suppliers. So you have a certain part that you need in your project um, and then you can order it from three different suppliers but how do you manage that all in, your, in those materials. And that's actually from our experience um, the kind of feedback that you get from the community uh, first before anybody like engages in like helping you with designing it and um, really tackling sort of design problems, they send you like alternative suppliers. Uh, and very often, um, they are specific to a certain area or they um, they're like very available but more expensive or, or less available but therefore very cheap. So th there needs to be a, a way of like um, managing all those, all, all the input in an effective way. We really kind of feel like, just from our experience for the last uh, five or however long we've been doing this year, so um, doing open source hardware projects is that kind of the bomb is the entryway drug into the open hardware world. And so, if you can kind of effectively manage that bomb, it's really the most crucial part in terms of it being a successful open hardware project, but also a successful open hardware community. Um, so, kind of by creating this service or this web app that leads to kind of the more uh, versatile kind of proud and power bombs. We think that it will really help hopefully elevate the popularity and kind of ease the entry into open hardware projects for people by making them really approachable, more social, and kind of possible for people to who are, who are globally, uh, globally uh, accessible in terms of community but locally um, editable in terms of material and kind of making it this fun thing for people to maintain, not only for the core developers, but also the users and other kind of sub-developers. Okay. Very cool. Um, Matt, 
I'll leave it to you for you had questions there for them? Well why don't we um why don't we save this to the end and uh, should we invite Toby to talk a bit about pixel shaders? Yes. yes. There you're there. Go ahead, Toby. Star seven to unmute. Toby, are you there? Should we circle back? Forrest, are you there? Do you want to take us through Mimu and then we'll circle back? Forrest, do you also have to do star seven to mute? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah, if you refresh this page, I just added some more um, examples to this. Um, uh, I did refresh. There we go. Okay. Um, so, so Mimo is. Um, I showed I showed Mimo to this call a few months ago, and um, I've been continuing to work on it. And um, so, it's all about um, making doing visual programming with boxes and wires to make images and animation and um, in the future audio stuff. Um, but try uh, click on the particles to trails um, thumbnail and it should start um, drawing something. So this, this is kind of a, a more complicated example. Um, yeah. So if you scroll over to the um, to the bigger box there, you can see it. It's um, slowly slowly drawing this image. And um, if you if you change the if you change the the inputs and um, oh, yeah, it's really slow. Uh, um, if you change the the input, to, it'll make totally different kinds of of images there. Um, try, um, go back one page, and and there I have some uh, still still <coughs> excuse me still images of of what I've made with this particular one. Okay, is it under more? Yeah. Do I, yeah. Okay. So, so this is like um, some examples of. Is it coming through? My my connection here is pretty slow. Um, so these are some more examples of of what I've made with a with a similar setup of of boxes and wires, just changing the variables that that went into these. Um, so it, for me, it's been um, it's been fun to. To just experiment with this, but um, what I want to do now is make a community site where, if um, if you see an image like this, then you could go into the app that made it, and you could change the variables and and republish it. So kind of forking forking images and um, and kind of making that an iterative process in a community. Um, so from here. Um, I've been working on a rewrite of the of the interface, and um, and also the the back end. Um, so, if if anybody's interested in creative JavaScript data flow coding, like please get in touch. I need some um, some guidance from somebody that knows more about JavaScript than me. Um, and and then also in this time, I'm going to be working on this community. Site, um, so there's a, the question there is how much can I tie the community that I'm making into the webmaker.org community, and um, if if we have overlap there, how can we how can we um, take advantage of that and tie them together? So that's it. Very cool. 
Thanks, for us. Well, did it, Toby, did, were you able to unmute yourself? Star seven. I don't know if he's here. Okay. Well, we can just encourage people to click on the Pixel Shaders link in line 136 and play around with it. Um, I played around with it a bit yesterday. Um, well, why don't we move to uh, questions then? Um, and people can just uh, add questions under line 153. Um, there's, a, there's a few there already. Um, and we'll start with the, the question for the Bompu team. Could, can you give some examples of the, like the kinds of open hardware projects people are, are building? Phil so F to star seven again, Abby. And I think we're there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, the, the question is what kind of hardware projects it's for. Um, well, basically anything that needs more. <coughs> sorry. Anything that needs more than the, uh, just one or two suppliers. Um, basically, um, when when you have all this uh, material, all this um, uh, supply, material suppliers available out okay, there, it's very easy to sort of uh, use them all and build very complex uh, projects. Like I, I could see like a car being built in open source fashion quite easily if um, the management of the, of the, of the Material list is easy, easy enough. Um, like the CNC machines, like you see a lot of projects in this area. Um, the, the the problem we see is um, a lot of the times people um, stop managing the supplier lists and degrade kits. So they take certain parts of of uh, open hardware projects and sell them as kits, which um, which is which is still nice. Nice. Uh, it makes some income from that, and uh, it's still a, an open hardware project in a way. But uh, the community loses out in a bit because um, the, the actual parts are not online anymore. So you have the single point of failure. So if the person who created the project uh, doesn't sell a kit anymore, uh, it's, it's very hard to maintain uh, the piece of hardware you have. So if you imagine like a 3D printer or like a CNC machine, there's a cutter. Uh, it's very crucial that you still have uh, ac access to your uh, material list uh, because you need to maintain the machine. Uh, so if a person takes out like a subsystem and sells it as a kit and then stops selling it, it's very hard to uh, maintain it and it really takes away from your openness of a project. So um, uh, the, the idea is that you have, you can kind of do both. Um, you have, you have this, uh, this system that allows you to, okay, I'll take a set of subsystem uh, and I create a kit from that, but I still publish all the suppliers so people who have the, have the hardware or have the machine can easily like, reorder parts by themselves. This is kind of the question. Cool. That's great. Thank you. <laughs> so, any other questions for our uh, Open Art fellows or the Ivy team? So Angela, if, if people want to stay involved in these projects or contribute to them, what's, what's the best way to do that? Um, well, we've basically started up um, a mailing list. Uh, iBeam has started a mailing list. So there's a link to that um, under the How to Get Involved uh, part of our block here in the Etherpad. Um, and then we're going to be sharing a lot um, also on the WebMaker list and um, online via the Open Art site um, at iBeam. So we're going to keep everybody up to date and bring in the fellows as their projects develop. And we really want to make links between everybody here on this call and uh, the three fellows and their projects. So we're just going to try and keep communicating as much as possible. And then, um, yeah, if the fellows also have questions for our the Mozilla community, then we also encourage you guys to kind of throw those questions or asks out there as well. Uh, Paul, do you have anything you want to add here? Yeah, I was just typing to um, in the chat window just that the, the URL is there if people want to sign up more about the projects. The intention is to launch a project 
specific website in the very near future, which will have more comprehensive documentation and about the project so you can stay up to date. But in the meantime, you can sign up for a mailing list and we'll keep you posted. Very cool. Thanks, Paul. And thanks to our fellows for uh, presenting. This is great stuff. Uh, let's push ahead. I think, rumor has it, we are launching the Game On competition tomorrow. Chloe, can you uh, tell us more about that? Hello. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, awesome. So yeah, Game On uh, is launching tomorrow. We're super excited about this. Uh, you can hear the clapping in the background. Uh, so Game One is a joint initiative with uh, local actually to empower game developers from around the world to imagine the web as an open gaming platform. And you know, we're running this competition uh, for um, like various reasons. So first of all, you know, it will help us spread the word about all the amazing things we're actually already doing in this space, but also get some examples of what can we possibly do with like a web makery kind of approach to games. So for example, we know that games are great interest points for learning um, you know, how to code, and we have these ideas for hackable games. So uh, one of the categories, for example, for the competition is hackable games. So the competition is a great kind of vehicle for us to see examples, um, as well as like, see the community you know, at the intersection of like, uh, open web people, game developers, youth that are kind of interested about this, and following the momentum that we had at MozFest. Uh, so for the next few months, we're going to be exploring three themes in uh, game design and the open web. These coincide with the three categories of the competition, which are hackable games, so games that uh, by design are kind of uh, hackable like the web itself, and then web-only games, so games that can be only possible on the web, uh, as well as cross-device games. And again, we, we kind of curated these categories because we, wa we want to push this idea of the web as a, as a canvas for experimentation, for new types of games and mechanics. Uh, and inspire people to think, these kind, think, think along those lines. So the new site is under embargo, but not for too long. You guys can share our beautiful site uh, tomorrow. You can click on it at line 175. Um, shout out to Ross um, and Chris Appleton for making this happen. Um, meanwhile, I wanted to say that um, our plan for the next few months is to run a blog. Uh, where we will be hosting interviews, guest blog posts, um, and so forth. And each month we're going to be covering kind of one of the competition themes. So December is Hackable Games Month, the gift of keeps giving. Uh, so and a few other things uh, is that we're launching with a double game jam uh, in New York and London. So a big part of the competition is running live events. Uh, in specific game jams. So we're kind of testing the ground uh, by following a classic global game jam format. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, familiar with global game jam. It usually runs once a year. Uh, it's probably the biggest um, game jam in the world. It happens in various locations, lasts for two days, and usually starts with a set of like speakers. Friday night, people brainstorm from teams, and uh, two days they kind of spend uh, building games. So if you are in New York or London, Please join us. Uh, also, special shout out to Mozillians Michelle Thorne for uh, running the one in London, and uh, John Pevan, as well as like Jess Atul and Brian, who are helping uh, with the New York one. And <laughs> you guys gonna tell they're behind me. Uh, so uh, yeah. So what's happening for the next few months? As I said, we're gonna be running um, more game jams. Uh, Jamie, who is our like, rock star. Um, project manager for this and is helping running a lot of, of the events and partners um, has already act six confirmed game jams, community game jams, and joined events with some of our partners. And I think that's about it. If you guys find bugs, you can post them on GitHub. And yeah, that's actually about it. So I can take some, uh, I can check out the questions. Cool. Yeah, I have so, questions about Game On sure, under line 194. Fantastic. So are we able to see submissions as they come in? Uh, that's a question for us. <laughs> I think we can. No, Ross? Maybe not yet. We have one submission. So we got one today, even before launching. So that's great. I think we're going to follow the Ignite um, gallery structure. So at some point, yeah, you'll be able to see submissions. But Ross might know better. Ross, pick up if you want. Okay, there you go. You can see the entries. So can Very people cool. host their 
their own game jam. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, so can people host their own game jams? Absolutely, and we definitely want you to do that. So the idea is that we're just seeding some game jams also to test this format um, this month. But absolutely, we have made, um, uh, there's a lovingly made game jam kit um, modeled after like uh, summer campaign web makers kit that you guys can follow. And then if, if you are a community member and you plan to host a game jam, you can also just get directly in touch with us. We're going to help you with that um, and, and the planning for your game jam. What if a game is multi-device, hackable, and web only? <laughs> so you have to choose one of these categories for the competition, the one that you feel maybe is like uh, stronger. Yeah, you got to pick one. <laughs> Are any people excluded? Can most people submit games? Um, I think that that's one of the rules of the competition. I'm pretty sure that if you work for Mozilla, you cannot submit games to the competition. You can um, take a look at the what we call in human rules in line 205 and check for yourself, but I'm pretty sure you can't. However, if you are involved in like Mozilla projects like Web Forward, for example, you can actually submit games. Could you repeat that I, last bit? Could you repeat that last sorry. bit, Chloe? I said that if, if you're actually part of another competition for Mozilla right now, like Ignite or uh, Web Forward or some other program, you can actually submit games. So it's just if you're a Mozilla employee, you cannot submit games. I see. Cool. Thanks. Uh, any other questions? Sure. So um, you can follow us at Moz Games um, or hashtag Moz Games to get involved in the conversation. And you can jo join us also on IRC if you want to have like direct chats about it. There is plenty of information also on the site if you have specific questions about the competition or if you want to join the Mozilla Games list. Great. Thanks, yeah. Chloe. Awesome stuff. Thank you. Cool. Well, uh, pushing ahead to line 218, this is actually kind of mostly a nonverbal item. Um, just asking for a bit of a peer assess, trying to, trying to pull together a bunch of the great sort of thinking and planning posts people in this group are, are writing for 2013. So you can just have a look at that list under line 220. Uh, and if you've written something around thinking or planning for the coming year uh, that isn't already on there, um, maybe just add it. Um, so we can do a bit of a synthesis kind of roundup post later this week. Um, and I'd encourage people to look at Brett's brand new post in line 228, just added. Well, I'm just scrolling down under line 255. There's uh, a great uh, report back from Emma on the MozReps Global Webmaker Project she's working on. Uh, I encourage people to check out uh, the blog post uh, and the Google group thread under line 258. Um, and lastly, just line 275. Uh, given that we're coming to the end of the year, I'd love ideas from this group on how we might do some kind of best of Webmaker in 2012 list or post or just some way to celebrate um, your favorite kind of people and moments of the past year. Um, but not sure how to do it. So if folks have ideas, maybe just add them to the pad or, or get in touch. So I think that takes us to the end of the agenda. Does anybody have any kind of final shout outs or announcements or questions before we uh, wrap up? Going once. Going twice. Cool. Thanks everybody. We'll talk to you all next week and have a great WebMaker week. Uh, bye everybody. Oh, Brett's trying to chat. <laughs> Sorry, Brett. Star 7, Brett. Hey, Brett, are you there? Hello? Hey, Brett, we can hear you. Oh, sorry, I double muted. Um, yeah, this is just a quick shout out. The, the post that I made today, I, um, I think I would like to do this post as a, um, an agenda announcement for this call 
next week. Um, and to do that, uh, we need a lot more sort of discussion on this and, and feedback amongst one another. So this is kind of an explicit ask for people to uh, <laughs> read that post. Um, it, I've been um, doing like a, a whole bunch of other people and kind of kind of dog food our tools, which I want to see if we can all do that a bit more to to sort of use Thimble or Popcorn Maker to express some of our uh, vision for what we want our tools to look like in 2013. So I've taken a first stab at that, and um, Jess and I actually had a really great meeting uh, here in Victoria last week, um, and we're really close to um, presenting a pretty uh, consistent and cohesive uh, vision for how we want our tools and our content to evolve. Um, but before we do that, we really want uh, a robust discussion with all of you. And there's a lot of red meat in that post that I put in there around um, how we can change our tools, the kind of content that we want to focus on. Um, and there's a bonus video of um, nerds discussing HyperCard from 25 years ago uh, for those of you who need a little bit of um, nerds discussing HyperCard uh, in your morning. But um, in all seriousness, yeah, there's a lot of uh, stuff in there, some of which will be new, some of which will be um, excitingly controversial, some of which definitely affects um, the work that we're all going to do together. So I'm really hoping that this can be a start of, of a good discussion. And then I'm actually thinking that perhaps this week we want to set up um, for staff and for anybody that's interested something like a, a fireside chat or, or something that's, that's really around focusing on this topic of, of how we're going to change our tools, how can they work together, what kind of comments, and yes, there's a troll video in there as well. So this is my plea. Watch that video, leave some comments, and let's, uh, let's do some discussion. And Jess is in the chat saying that she's also got uh, some, some awesome blog posts coming up. Awesome. Thanks, Brett. Very cool. Um, and I'm going to take up your suggestion to try and use popcorn to present some of the planning work I've been doing with others. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it's kind of tricky because um, I was up pretty late last night making it, and I thought it would be interesting to show on this call. But the thing about a, a popcorn maker, which is a feature uh, and a bug, is that they, are, um, they don't work on a call like this. But they do actually work quite well uh, for some solitary reflection. Uh, the one I've made is um, multiple minutes in length. So again, it's the plea uh, to watch that and, and think about it and, and respond. Please make short videos. Cool. We can make short videos, Kyle, but this is a long one because it's all about everything we're going to do next year. <laughs> Um, Brad, I think you got one question in line 243. I, I think this is a popcorn-related uh, question. Like creating a content ty type um, that specifically serves like the mentor, webmaker, mentor, and instructor community. Yeah, absolutely. That, uh, there are content types that are in that uh, video that are specifically for uh, the mentor and instructor community. Um, so yes, absolutely. Cool. Uh, any other questions for Brett before we wrap? Sounds like no. Thanks, Brett. That's great. And so we'll, you'll come back next week and we'll unpack this in more depth? Yes, sir. Sounds good. All right, everybody. <laughs> Let's, I will sign off for real now. Talk to you all next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Please stand by.